Okay, Th thanks Mike for that introduction um, to the, the, uh, the series of concepts that we're going to be now discussing. I'd like to say that I'm uh, presenting this on behalf of not only myself, but uh, Mike and Dan, and I want to acknowledge the significant uh, advice and input that we received from Adam Felsenfeld and Josh, Josh Schloss. Okay, so I'd like to give now just a real brief outline for my presentation. I'm going to uh, review the timeline for these initiatives, discuss the overall goals, really pull out what we think is new from the, what's been currently done under ENCODE, then uh, briefly describe each of the concepts, uh, identify some opportunities we think um, there are for co-funding, and then describe the overall budget. And then after that, I'm going to go back and just council can discuss and vote on each individual concept. Okay, so this is the timeline for the initiatives. Um, as Mike mentioned, the current phase of ENCODE was funded in 2016, I'm sorry, 2012, and funding will be ending in July of 2016. We had the planning workshop in, uh, that Mike just described in March of this year. We're presenting the concept clearances to this uh, council in May of this year. If these um, concepts are approved. We will be releasing the funding opportunities at the end of the summer or in August of this year with a receipt date in November. Signed to review will be next winter, probably in February or, or March, early March. And then next May, we'll be bringing these applications back to, uh, to council for review along with the funding plan and then issuing awards in July of 2016. Okay, so based on the workshop recommendations that Mike just reviewed, we developed a series of goals for future initiatives. Um, these include expanding the catalog of functional elements in human and mouse genomes, but moving now also beyond cataloging to understanding the functional walls of genomic elements in specific biological contexts. We want to uh, develop strategies to apply these studies to disease. We want to increase the number of scientists from the research community that's participating to, and contributing to this resource. We want to develop analytical tools to enhance data utility and continue to make the data, tools, analyses, and assemble the cyclopedia really available to the research community. And so to, in order to um, accomplish these goals, we've, we are proposing four initiatives. The first is functional element mapping centers. The second is functional element characterization centers. Third are computational analysis research projects. And the fourth is the ENCODE Data Coordination and Analysis Center, or fondly known as the EDCAC. I'd like to highlight a few features of um, these initiatives, what really is, we think is different than what is currently being done under ENCODE. Um, the first is functional characterization at scale. Um, this would be, of course, under the, the characterization initiative. The second is direct application of functional genomics assays to disease studies. This would be both in the mapping and the characterization centers, and significantly increase community participation through the mapping centers, the characterization centers, and through data submission to the EDCAC. Okay, this is the proposed organization of um, these initiatives, at, with the green components being the new activities. The uh, data production activities will take place in the mapping centers and the characterization centers, in part with um, using samples that are contributed by the community. The data will be submitted to the ENCODE Data Coordination and Analysis Center, where it will be processed, housed, and displayed and made available to the research community, and also analyzed to create the encyclopedia of, of um, functional or candidate functional elements. Um, we will also be receiving community data to the EDCAC that can contribute to the encyclopedia. And as before, we want to uh, support computational analysis to contribute to both the analyses and, and directly to the encyclopedia. Okay, so I'm now going to describe in more detail the first of the four initiatives. The first is functional element mapping centers. The purpose is to expand the catalog of functional elements in the human and mouse genome. And this will be done by applying high throughput assays to map biochemical activities that are highly associated with specific functional elements and then an expanded cell space that will also will include disease studies. And the idea is to support both uh, technologies that are currently being used in ENCODE as well as new technologies. For funding, we want to use a cooperative agreement U54 mechanism that we are currently using in ENCODE to fund between six and eight centers for a total uh, level of $20 million per year and total cost uh, for four years. And the idea is to fund these centers. Groups will be working closely together to form a research consortium 
um, as is the current model, uh, currently being done in ENCODE. Okay, so there are um, a couple of, of new features for these functional element mapping centers that I want to highlight. As we've said, we want to bre um, broaden the community participation by obtaining unique biological samples from experts. And these may be, as Mike has referred to, these unbiased uh, data collection for samples that are just not currently in the, um, in the catalog. These may be of biological focus, such as on a differentiation pathway, or they may be of disease interest. Um, we are proposing to devote approximately 25% of the mapping efforts to disease samples, uh, or these are to disease studies. These can actually be samples from unaffected as well as affected individuals. Both will be contributing to the catalog, um, and we hope uh, that we can learn something by, by examining the differences between the unaffected and affected tissues, learn something about disease, and more broadly, by studying a number of diseases learned how to develop a strategy that we can study disease using these molecular uh, genomic assays you know, more broadly in the future. We want to develop a scientific basis for bounding the experimental space. If you think about what we say we want to make a comprehensive, complete catalog, well, thinking about every different possible cell type under every different environmental condition is, is really just un unboundable. And so we want to, um, through these centers, run experiments to try to bound it to try to identify really what are the most useful samples that we can use to do, do for very deep um, interrogation. Um, we want to use only use samples that are consented for open access data release. As Mike um, uh, mentioned a little earlier, we are currently doing that. We've piloted that in the current phase of ENCODE successfully. We believe that this will really make the resource much more, more useful to the research community. We plan to have a limited focus on mouse due to the limitation in, in budget um, that we have, and we are proposing approximately 10 percent of that effort being devoted to mouse and focused on adult tissues. Um, we are currently, in this phase in code, focusing largely on developmental um, time course, and so this, we believe, will nicely complement that. We believe this data will be helpful in annotating um, and understanding human genome. And then finally, we feel we need to have flexibility in the pipeline. We may have some technologies that are not well tested, and we may want to focus those initially on, on a subset of samples that are already well studied in ENCODE, um, and then if, if their uh, feasibility of, um, of use at high throughput um, is, has been demonstrated, then we might scale that up to many more tissues. We may want to bring in new technologies over time, and we want to also be able to take advantage of new opportunities that are brought in by collaborators. Okay, so the second uh, initiative is functional characterization centers. This is a completely new um, activity, and the purpose is to enhance the catalog of functional elements by characterizing and validating a set of elements, both in mouse and human. We're hoping to obtain an understanding of the utility and the generalizability of these um, functional characterization approaches. And um, we, we would like to, by comparing the different out, um, uh, methods, figure out if there's a general strategy that we can uh, recommend to the community for further study. And also, I think it's really important is to begin to um, develop ways in which we can better predict function. Under the scope and objectives, we plan to support uh, multiple approaches to test candidate elements in specific biological contexts to validate and characterize functional elements. Um, we, you can think about um, functional characterization, it's very broad, they're very di different scales. You can think about uh, function at molecular level or or organismal level. Um, of course, biological function is very context dependent, um, so you may need to study it under different conditions. Um, and then, of course, there are a number of different function elements. So we do expect that we will need to be supporting um, multiple, acid, multiple approaches. For funding, uh, we want to uh, support these as UO1s, again, using the cooperative agreement mechanism. We feel we need to support a critical mass of these um, centers. We're proposing between seven and ten centers. Again, these will, groups will work closely together. They will also interact with groups from the mapping centers um, as part of the consortium. And we are proposing $5.9 million in total costs per year for four years. Um, so some of the key features of these functional characterization centers, um, applicants can select the cell system or biological context for in-depth studies. Um, not listed on the slide is, of course, they will can, can choose which functional elements they, they can be studying. Um, we're going to specifically encourage studies of specific diseases using relevant cell sources, 
And uh, similar to what I said about mapping centers, these can be done in samples that are highly relevant to a particular disease, but can be unaffected as well as effect affected. And uh, by comparing them, we may be able to see how different function elements uh, operate under normal and, and disease um, conditions, and also hope to develop a strategy for applying these assays um, to disease in, in the long run. Uh, any group can, can propose to do multiple assays. Um, and uh, you can imagine that, that groups may propose to study many functional elements using high throughput methods, such as massively parallel reporter assays. They may want to study a smaller number of um, elements using um, lower throughput methods uh, that may provide more physiological context, such as in transgenic animals. Um, the assays can be conducted in well-justified model organisms, not just in mouse. They could do other model organisms, such as zebrafish or whatever is well-justified. They need to focus on either human or mouse function elements. We're asking that each group um, devote 25 percent of their own effort to elements that are being studied by all, so that we have an opportunity to be able to compare the different strategies and, and approaches that people are using on the same set of um, function elements to the extent that that's um, practical. And then again, we're looking only for use of samples consented for open access data release, again, to um, enhance the utility of this resource. Okay, the third initiative is for computational analysis. And the pur purpose of this is to maximize the utility of ENCODE and related functional genomics resources by bringing in additional computational expertise to analyze ENCODE data. So this is another way we're trying to expand the participation for the research community. And so we're seeking here investigator-initiated projects to develop and apply analytical and statistical tools to use and improve the resources. For funding, we're looking for the cooperative agreement mechanism to fund approximately six projects at $3 million in total cost per year for four years. And we feel that, again, we need a critical mass of these and, and we, we have benefited by the cooperative agreement mechanism currently to have groups working together and interacting and really understanding the ENCODE data in depth. Imagine a number of different activities. Some are, are um, suggested here, which would include developing new methods to improve on the analysis, the visualization, and interpretation of ENCODE data, by, uh, also by combining ENCODE data with related functional genomics data from other projects to derive new biological insights, and using ENCODE data to improve on the analysis of disease mapping studies to identify causal variants. Okay, and then the final initiative is the ENCODE Data Coordination and Analysis Center, EGCAC. The idea is to support a center that can provide community access to ENCODE data and resources, not only what will be conducted um, under this phase, but also um, uh, what has previously been um, produced for ENCODE. We also want to support the analysis of ENCODE data necessary to create and make available a high-quality encyclopedia for the community. And we want to also support the, um, the center to organize and facilitate consortium activities. And so what we plan to do here is to support um, a data coordination center and a data analysis center separately because we believe that there is um, specific expertise that's needed uh, that's different for each group. Um, so we fund them separately under this initiative, but we expect them to work very closely together and to really um, uh, come together and function as a single entity. And this is model for what the current um, funding situation is for ENCODE. In this um, initiative, we want to greatly expand the activities for, um, for the DCC, I'll describe in a moment, um, over what is currently funded. And the uh, DAC activities will be more fo tightly focused on creating and validating the encyclopedia and, and a little less focused on integrated um, analyses. For funding, we again want the cooperative agreement, U54, research resource um, uh, mechanism, again, to funding two centers, one data coordination center, one data analysis center at seven and a half million dollars total cost per year. And this is, unlike the others, which for four years, this is for five years. So we're um, proposing one year beyond um, the data production to help uh, final, final, all, finalize all the data and, and uh, have closeout activities. And uh, related to that, we're seeking an additional $2.6 million in FY16 for the existing data coordination center to close out current ENCODE activities, and this is approximately 75 percent of their, um, their current level of funding. So we're expecting that these uh, two groups will work very closely together, but based on, on the needs and the expertise, we'll, each group will have um, the lead in particular activities, and I'm now just going to run through these. I'm going to go these in a, in a bit of detail because it's not always obvious what these, what these groups are doing. 
Um, the DCC will lead activities such as um, they will develop, house, and maintain databases to track, store, and provide access to data, metadata, and computational tools. They will develop, maintain, and update the data processing pipelines. They will maintain and enhance the portal to ensure easy access to the data and resources. They will provide the, to the community access to data in state-of-the-art browser visualization formats. They will track and report on data submissions. One of their new activities highlighted here in yellow is to import data from outside investigators and projects, developing the needed infrastructure and methodology. We expect that this will actually be a significant amount of work, having to work individually with different groups. They'll have to develop standards, you know, what is the minimum data quality, et cetera, um, to maintain uh, the high quality uh, resource. Um, and then another new activity is to serve as a data coordinating center. And this would be to facilitate communication and coordination organize and support annual meetings and working groups, and to support outreach activities to promote broad use of data analyses and tools. And except for the outreach activities, um, ENCODE has not had this support previously, unlike a lot of um, or several other large projects that NHGRI supports, and we feel that this would be um, very help helpful to have. Okay, in terms of the DAC-led activities, um, the DAC will specify and update data processing pipelines. They will provide leadership and computational expertise to analyze data for uh, several different activities. One is to update and refine the encyclopedia. A new activity would be to develop the scientific strategy to bound the cell space to be deeply interrogated that I refer to under Initiative 1. Another new activity would be to expand the lexicon of functional elements beyond basic categories of promoter and enhancer and insulator. And we think um, the group feels very uh, constrained by having such, such little uh, few, few categories when you're thinking about function, you know that it's more complex than that. And then also to update existing and develop new data quality metrics and standards for all data types. Then finally, a new, another new activity is we would like to, the DAC to reserve a small um, funds to be able to bring in additional expertise to conduct short-term specialized analyses needed to maximize the quality and the utility of the resource. Okay, those are the four initiatives. I um, just want to point out a couple of places where we see uh, opportunity for co-funding. We plan to uh, work with our um, colleagues and other institutes to seek support for projects that are focused on specific diseases or biology of interest to these other institutes. We can imagine either whole or partial funding of projects, especially for an, under the functional characterization initiative. We could see supplemental funding for mapping samples that are mapping of samples that are of particular interest to an institute, particularly in the mapping centers and opportunity for supplemental funding to support submission of existing or planned data that's being generated under other projects that would go directly to the EDCAC. Okay, this is a summary of um, the budget request. Um, we are looking um, for flat funding over uh, um, four years for each of these four initiatives, with the exception I just went over for the EDCAC of a, of a fifth year funding to close out activities, as well as an extension, one year extension of the current DCC. Um, this is for a total of $36.4 million a year. And this level of support is actually um, equivalent to the level that ENCODE received in FY12, uh, the first year that, this that the current phase of ENCODE was funded. Um, due to budget constraints, however, much of that funding was actually just for one year. And so we've had to take significant reductions in the out years. And so for the latest, um, FY14 is the, um, we have the latest budget information. Um, this request represents approximately a 21% um, increase over what ENCODE currently, um, currently has. Okay, are there any um, immediate questions before we go back to discuss each of the individual um, initiatives? I guess so. Okay. And I'm going to heavily rely on my colleagues here to help answer these questions. So, Howard.